Good evening, you're watching The Buck Stops here and I'm Bad Khadad. On the program this evening, an extraordinarily controversial proposal from the government that doesn't seem to have learnt anything yet from the Aam Aadmi Party. A proposal that says that 2.7 crore rupees per bungalow, 2.7 crore rupees of the taxpayers' money, that's your and my money, could be spent to rebuild each bungalow that falls within what's come to be called Latyan's Delhi. The government has proposed that the old bungalows need renovation. They should be raised to the ground and they should be rebuilt. 516 of them that, by the way, are going to cost 3,000 crores over 20 years. Now, the Aam Aadmi Party has demolished or at least tried to demolish VIP culture. But it seems the other netas still want the rule of the Raj. The Aam Aadmi Party is trying to bring down the walls of the Delhi Darbar by refusing the Sarkari Banglas. But on the program today, we're asking whether Latyan's Delhi is a slice of history or a veritable house of lords. That's going to be a big debate over the next 60 minutes on the buck stops here. Now, many of you outside Delhi may be wondering why we are doing a Delhi-centric program. But we don't believe this is about Delhi. We believe this is about a larger political principle. Are other parties being forced to re-examine political principles that essentially personify an entrenched VIP culture? And also, where is that thin line between preserving a nation's collective past but bringing down symbols of elitism? A little bit about Latin's Delhi first. It came up in the 1920s and 30s after the imperial capital was shifted to Delhi in 1911 by King George. Latin's Delhi, of course, refers to the architecture created in this zone by Edward Latin's and Herbert Baker, the two architects. The bungalow zone is spread over, and get this figure, this zone is spread over 2,800 hectare area with bungalows for government officials and their administrative offices. It, of course, came up during the British Raj and the way it was designed, the people who were the most powerful, the highest ranking people lived closer to the Acropolis as it were. And the lower you were in the hierarchy of the society then, the further away you lived from the central Acropolis. So let's get started with our debate on the buck stops here. There are many who are arguing that in the age of the Aam Aadmi, why refurbish, why renovate 516 bungalows in the heart of Delhi's political uh, capital, in the heart of its elite centre? Why not just consign Latin's Delhi to history. We're going to be focusing on both history and contemporary politics in this very interesting debate tonight and let's introduce our panel this evening. With me in the studio is Sohail Ashmi, well-known writer and filmmaker. I'm also joined by Mihir Sharma, associate editor with the Business Standard. The Business Standard has argued in its editorial that it's time to consign Latin's Delhi to history. I'm also joined by Raghav Chadda, a member of the Aam Aadmi Party. In many ways, the party has, as we said, tried to bring down the old walls of Delhi Darbar. On the buck stops here today, we're also joined by Hafiz Contractor. He's, of course, one of the best known architects and uh, planners, urban planners of our country. We're also joined from Kolkata tonight by Sir Mark Tully, one of our most respected journalists. Also joining us is Vijay Bahadur Singh. He's a Lok Sabha member of parliament. And we'll also get Abhishek Singhvi and Pavan Varma to get the program as we go along. Let me start uh, by getting a non-political perspective from you, Hafiz Contractor. Uh, speaking in your capacity who, as, a, as, 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 as such a well-known architect and somebody who has always also been involved in the past with the Latin Zone Review Committee. When you hear today uh, newspaper editorials, many commentators arguing that bring these bungalows down, they represent both colonialism and VIPism of the worst kind. What would you say, Hafiz Contractor? Uh, see, now I heard uh, there are several opinions. The first opinion is that uh, you uh, reconstruct. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second is don't touch it, preserve it. Second, uh, the third one is uh, utilize, uh, uh, utilize the land for, for affordable housing. Yes. And the fourth is rebuilt exactly the way it is. Mm. I would say that all of those four, I don't agree. Mm. First, let's say, uh, you know, what, what does Delhi represent? And, you know, when an outsider comes, mm. 
uh, this is the ambience that uh, it's the ambience you know of the whole uh, you know it's like a living room of your whole country hmm. any any uh, visitor any dignitary uh, when he comes he sees this area and hmm. that is what he gets the first glimpse of your country it's like the living room of your uh, of your house so I would say that, yes, I would like to retain this character and in fact you should enhance the character. So very interesting okay. Hafiz, uh, uh, Hafiz contractor, you are saying the living room, that, that Latin's Delhi in many ways is the living room of the country. Some would say it's the living room of the elite. It's the drawing room of the elite, it's not no, the drawing no, no, room no, of... No, 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 I, I think... Uh, no, 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 Barkha, th this is a wrong way of mm. using wrong words, uh, uh, living room of the elite. Now today, mm. whoever, whoever is the, uh, you know, uh, the party, the political scenario, mm. uh, uh, the, politi uh, the politicians are, you know, you would say the elite. Yes. What is an elite? The guy who has the power to make laws, the guy who tells you, you might say the elite is the guy who's got a lot of money or anything. Mm. But to me, mm. huh, to me, huh, this is the place where huh, uh, the guy who is making the laws, the guy who is going to direct your life, mm. he stays there and uh, everybody wants to stay nearer to the place where he works. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, but not many that, of us are lucky enough. All that is enough. not important to me. Yeah. You're speaking in a sense as an all architect. That is not important. You're speaking as an architect that the no, character, no. the character of Delhi is for you, Hafiz contractor, captured uh, in the history, uh, as it were, of Latin's Delhi. So he'll hush me. Come in there because I have read what you've written about this, and you've said, well, if you want to preserve the history, maybe keep one street, bring down the rest. Is that a bit nihilistic to argue it from the other side? Uh, is it is it a bit nihilistic because are we going to keep breaking down? the symbols of our history. Is your objection to these, this, this, this zone of government bungalows in Latians Delhi, is your objection because of what they represent historically or is your objection because of a uh, contemporary elitism? Both. You see, if you if you're talking of history, yes. when uh, the decision to shift the capital from Calcutta to Delhi was made in 1911 and the capital began to shift actually in 1912, after a long time, long search, a place was found where the Viceroy's residence will be located. Mm. And on either flank mm. were where the, uh, the um, uh, government houses, as it were, were yeah. to come up. And down the slope was where the senior bureaucrats mm. lived. Now, this is one narration mm. which has a very clear pecking order, which is imperial in its in its conception. Yeah. Now then we became independent and we created extensions. Mm. Mm. So we created a Mannagar and a Shannagar. Mm. There was obviously furor. How can you in a democratic country, you know, think of things like that? So Mannagar was changed into Ravindranagar and Shannagar was changed into Bharti Nagar. <laughs> and actually then there was uh, there was also a Vinayanagar, hmm. which was where the clerks had to live. This is extending the entire logic of the imperial So city. you're saying the very so structure was imperialist. Yes. The very planning of Lachin's yes. Delhi was and, imperialist. And, and in the Delhi of today, yes. where you have virtually millions living in 24 yard plots, you have people living in five acre bungalows. How, you know, how democratic is this? Can I take that to Samak Tali? Samak Tali, where is that line? Where is that line between preserving history that you accept as non-static, you accept as dynamic, you accept that history moves into the present and moves into the future with us? But Sohail Hashmi does also make a, a compelling argument that, that the entire designing of, of, of the heart of, of, of Delhi was imperialistic, not just hierarchical but also imperialistic. Yet you have argued that if Mughal architecture is to be preserved, then British architecture must be preserved in the same way, and that is what Latin's Delhi is. Do you believe that this has resonance in the India of today, in the politics <coughs> of today, where, as we've been saying, the walls of the Darbar are being brought down by parties uh, like the Aam Admi? Mark Tali. 
Well, first of all, I do believe that, uh, yes, Latian's Delhi should be preserved. I think it is part of Delhi's history. It is one of the um, cities of Delhi. And when people talk about renovation or pulling houses down, if you have a heritage site, what you do with it is you preserve it. You have mentioned a figure for the size of Latian's Delhi, but when you compare that with the totality of Delhi, it is absolutely nothing. I think also that there's so much tokenism in all that is being said about Latian's Delhi, as if you're going to solve all the problems of politicians uh, thinking that they're rulers or kings of this country, civil servants behaving like rulers rather than servants. If you think you're going to solve that by bringing down Latian's Delhi, well, obviously, you are mistaken. And there is another very important point. Look around you and see the sort of buildings which have come up in Delhi uh, since Latian's Delhi. Yeah. Do you really want those sort of buildings in the heart of Delhi? I don't think you do. I'll just allow Suhail Hashmi to come in there briefly, and Suhail, go ahead. I think, I think there is also, I, I'm personally quite confused about this, because there's a part of me that finds the idea of politicians refusing government bungalows an extremely compelling one, because there is something about the VIPism of it that, that's offensive. But on the other hand, how politically correct, how much are we going to stretch the political correctness or the political symbolism or what Mark calls the tokenism? Are we going to then look at parliament and say it's also a symbol of colonialism? Are we going to look at the president's house and say the same? Does he not make a fair point? And do we really want to become a capital of builders' flats, which we're already in danger of becoming, instead of these beautiful bungalows that at least give Delhi some character, which is what, what I think Havi's contractor was trying to say. Quickly, and then I'm going to move on to the politicians. See, yeah. I, I think it is not an either-or situation. Yeah. Now, as far as heritage conservation is concerned, I should think that if you want to preserve, preserve one street, you cannot, in the heart of the city, where people don't have space to live, have people, individuals living in, pl in, in properties which are five or six acres large, mm. four people. You can retain the, the design, but maybe reduce it in, in terms of size. So keep the facade, and but have more people staying have, within you know, it. There you are, know, there are, yeah. and, and this is what has been done in conservation all over the world. You cannot retain these massive places what is the per square kilometer per, uh, population living in New Delhi and in, in, in uh, Simapuri? You know, there has to be some semblance. Yeah, it's about equity in the end. Abhishek Singhvi, before uh, I, I get everybody else in, just want to get your perspective. Why, why would the government be even considering a proposal at a time when there is such revulsion? At, at, at the VIPism of, of our lives. And the VIPism doesn't just include politicians. I'll be, I'll be fair enough in saying that. But the, the greatest anger is directed at the Neta because y y people in urban India often think we are paying uh, for those of you who live in Sarkari bungalows. And I have a young person here, a young leader here from the Aam Aadmi Party. And, and they would say, listen, this is what we're challenging. This is the status quo thinking we're challenging. Abhishek. I, I'm sorry, I'm not able to understand, but how, which proposal are you talking about? The Latian, the, 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 the proposal to uh, renovate 516 bungalows in Latian's Delhi uh, at a cost of 2.7 crores per bungalow. You have Mihir Sharma here from the Business Standard who are arguing just bring the whole damn thing down. Yes. Yes. Uh, now, uh, two or three things. One is the concept of bring the whole damn thing down and the other is the concept of renovating. Yes. All I can say is personally, I am against uh, this expenditure of renovation uh, and unless of course something is direly in need of renovation or is falling apart. But that's one small part of the debate. The larger part of the debate I heard just now is uh, this whole feeling that you are able to stop this Lal Bhatti concept, this top of the mountain top, valley bottom, Raja Praja relationship by demolishing these buildings. Now this is something very nice, populist, knee jerk, very exciting to say. It is meaningless and hollow. Firstly, Barkha, if you are to replace them with even double-storied or triple-storied uh, structures, mm. it is the most hideous thought. <laughs> At the worst, what these buildings, what these Latians bungalows do for us is they preserve verdant Delhi. They keep the FAR low. They keep the usage low. Now, habitation by ministers and MPs is a different issue. 
if you want keep them vacant except that if you keep them vacant they will fall they will become decrepit and misused mm. and without use they will go bad mm. it is much better to keep them in use you do it humbly don't have red beacons flashing live a simple life otherwise but not for god's sake demolish them and replace them with hideous concrete structures where far utilization will put the load much more and will make this best part of delhi something horrible okay secondly Let, yeah. do you think it's going to solve any culture problem or any real problem the man who's going to go with a swagger with a swagger and with a, with a with a ego problem will remain the same the man who doesn't do it doesn't do it even if he lives in latrines delhi so yeah. i think these kind of meaningless tokenisms and symbolisms are just good for the time being they are not something which are lasting and they will do much more damage than they uh, than the than the problem they seek to solve okay can i just get raghav chadda in your party has chosen uh, uh, to refuse the bungalows that are on offer usually for delhi ministers but arvind kejriwal ran into an early controversy when he accepted a five room bungalow then he said no people haven't liked it i'm returning it uh, but you have actually a ironic situation here you have six bungalows refurbished by the government at a cost of 14 crores meant for delhi ministers lying empty now it could be argued taking not to take away from the romance of the idea of these bungalows not being occupied by netas it could be argued this is also a waste of money so where do you where do you come in on how practical this is you've heard both mark tally and 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 uh, abhishek singh be arguing this is just silly tokenism is actually not going to change the elitist politician i'll begin by saying that what has happened is that the urban development ministry has sent a request to the cabinet which can be divided into two parts part number 1 is demolishing them yeah. and part number 2 is rebuilding them in approximation of the bungalows original style yeah. with modern amenities yes modular kitchens included yes exp expensive amenities so yeah. the first part of a demolition is absolutely fine should be done but <laughs> but the part which me which which stands for rebuilding them in the same style and design does not appeal what to me what would you what would I'll you tell want you there why. instead i'll tell you why see these can be each of them is about 2 3 acre plot of land which can be converted into 4 5 residencies can be converted into multi story uh, residencies and various other things can be done with that what about delhi's history as you heard hafiz contractor say this is the living room it, see, it, you know it's when, the character of delhi when mm. we talk about delhi's his history we should also remember that 74% of delhi lives in unplanned settlements and and I uh, just to give you an example type 8 bungalows mm. which uh, which accommodates uh, more than uh, 140 ministers has almost 9 bedrooms four servant quarters two garages plus lush green gardens what is the use of those somebody has been entrusted with the responsibility of public service what is the point of staying in such lavish we are against the system of mal governance which is deeply rooted in this obscene so display bring, of bring, the bring them down part of the proposal is fine just don't bring them up again bring up multiple uh, uh, accommodations mr sharma how far do we stretch this because i keep coming back to this and i'm not actually being facetious that while i take suhail hashmi's point that anyone who knows their history will know that there is an imperialistic hierarchy in the planning do we include parliament do we include the president's house is the president's house also a waste of space your paper has argued that it's time to consign latians delhi to history How do you define Latin's Delhi to history when you say that, and what do you include in it? Well, let's remember that some a large part of what actually we now call the Latin's bungalow zone was actually not meant to last forever. Maybe Rashtrapati Bhavan or the Vice Regal Lodge was, yeah. but a lot of these bungalows were actually <coughs> built to be semi-temporary things, mm. which is why they are falling apart. Not, not none. Neither Baker nor Latians wanted to design them. They were frequently designed by apprentices. Some of them are are ridiculously designed. You know, you have this giant wooden ballroom in the center and five bathrooms leading off it. I mean, I think it's one in Safta Jang Lane like that or something. And um, would you be okay if it was a museum? Well, you know, a lot of them are turning into museums, and the more ministers die, the more museums they'll become. <laughs> uh, but eventually, if we stay a republic and uh, long enough and have enough prime ministers. the entire damn thing will be turned into museums but the point is more this the point is that there is an entire center of a city of 20 million people which has essentially 1200 people living in it and yeah. this is just a you know it 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 is it is shocking that it exists in a modern society mm -hmm. you can go to the top of the taj hotel taj mahal singh which is in the center of the green zone of latin's of the latin's bungalow zone and look down 
and you can't see a normal person anywhere. In fact, some of the people, uh, uh, some of the houses that you can that are visible from there actually have ac um, kitchen gardens. Kitchen gardens so in the middle is, of it, a 20 million So it is the inequity of city. it rather than the his historical. Uh, 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 one second, Pavan, coming to you in a second. It's, it's not the historical symbolism that bothers you uh, of it being colonial and imperialistic. It is the current inequity. Partly. I mean, the, uh, in, in, in some sense, the fact is that it represents exactly what went wrong with the Indian state. It slipped into the shoes that were, had been abandoned by the British Raj with far too great, uh, far too easily.